In this video, I'm going to take a look at electrochemical cells. Uh, these are formed when you combine two half cells together. So the example I'm going to use in the video is from the combination of the copper 2 plus copper half cell with the vanadium 2 plus vanadium half cell. Okay, so there's a diagram of what this cell would look like. I've chosen to put the copper, copper 2 plus um, half cell on the left and the vanadium, vanadium 2 plus on the right. It doesn't matter which way around they go, that's just the way I've chosen to do it. So I'll quickly talk through this and then we'll talk about what's actually going to happen. So starting on the left hand side we've got a rod of copper, so copper solid, and that's dipping into a one mole per decimeter cubed solution of aqueous copper 2 plus ions. Remember we need two oxidation states present for the um, substance in question. And then on the right hand side we've got the vanadium rod dipping into a one mole per decimeter cubed solution of the V2 plus ions. There's an external circuit, um, so we've got wire here connecting the rods with a voltmeter in between. And then connecting the solutions is what we call a salt bridge. Now that's just a piece of filter paper soaked in something like potassium nitrate solution. It just needs to be an electrolyte. And what that does is it allows a flow of ions uh, into the beakers. So it'll be the K plus ions and the NO3 minus ions in this case. Now, that's all you need to know for A-level about the salt bridge. But if you're interested in knowing more, basically what happens is as the cell starts to operate and the electrons start to move about, there's an imbalance of charge between the two beakers. And if that gets too great, the cell stops working. So what this, this flow of ions does is it addresses that and it balances out the charge imbalance. Okay, so you'll notice that I've written up the half equations for the two half cells. Remember, these are written as reduction processes, so they involve the gain of electrons. And I've put in brackets there the standard electrode potential values for these two um, half cells. So we've got plus 0 0.34 volts for this one, the copper 2 plus copper 1 and minus 1.20 volts for the vanadium 2 plus vanadium 1. So if you remember from the previous video, what does this uh, electrode potential value tell us? Well, it gives us a measure of how readily the substance on the left-hand side can gain electrons. And basically, the more positive the electrode potential value is, the more able it is to accept or gain electrons. So you can clearly see that the copper 2 plus, with its more positive standard electrode potential, is better at accepting electrons than the vanadium 2 plus. So when you put these two half cells together, the copper 2 plus ions are going to accept the electrons from the vanadium. So the vanadium is going to be forced to give up its electrons because the copper 2 plus ion is going to accept them. So essentially, this half equation is going to run in the forwards direction, gaining electrons, whereas this one has been forced to give up its electrons, so it's going to run in reverse. So what we can do now is we can combine these two half equations together and generate the overall reaction for this electrochemical cell. Now, because the electrons are both two, it's an easy combination of half equations. We don't need to multiply any of them out. So the overall reaction for this electrochemical cell is going to look like this. So the copper 2 plus ions are going to react with the vanadium. Remember, this is taking the electrons from the vanadium and generate copper and vanadium 2 plus ions as a result. So if we think about the electrons, they're going to be traveling this way around the circuit because the copper two plus ions are pulling the electrons around. So we can draw some uh, arrows on here to show the electron flow. So I'll just put some E minuses on there. Electrons flow away from the negative electrode to the positive electrode. So this is going to be your negative electrode. This is going to be your positive one. An easy way to remember the polarity of the electrodes is basically the more positive electrode potential is the positive electrode. So the copper is the positive electrode, 
the vanadium is the negative one. So then if you think about, well, what's going to happen over the course of time, so you can see this half equation here is running in the forwards direction. So the copper two plus ions in here are going to become copper atoms. So this electrode is basically going to kind of grow. You're going to have copper deposited on this electrode. And what's going to happen to this electrode? Well, look, the vanadium is disintegrating into V2 plus ions because it's having to give up its electrons. So eventually, this is going to break off like that. And obviously, the cell would stop working then because we've run out of reactants. So the final thing I want to mention in the video is how would you calculate the voltage of this cell? So that's what we would call the E cell. So you can see there I've written up E cell is equal to the most positive sand electrode potential minus the least positive one. So there's the numbers in now, 0.34 minus minus 1.20. So that's going to come out at 1.54 volts. So just to finish off, I thought I'd do a summary of what we've covered in the video. So the first thing we can say is electrochemical cells are made from two half cells. The standard electrode potential values, the E0 values, tells us which species will accept electrons and which will give up the electrons. So remember the most positive standard electrode potential is the species on the left, which will accept the electrons. And for the least positive one, the species on the right will give up its electrons. In terms of the polarity of the electrodes, the most positive standard electrode potential is the positive electrode. Obviously, the least positive is the negative one. The electrons will flow from the negative electrode, so the least positive standard electrode potential, to the positive electrode. And finally, the voltage of the cell, or E cell for short, is calculated by taking the most positive standard electrode potential and subtracting from it the least positive standard electrode potential. So I hope that was helpful and made sense. In the next video, I'm gonna look at how we calculate these standard electrode potential values.